Okay, so for our next tutorial, let's create a new problem. Let's have it use strings, which is a data type that we haven't used in any of our problems yet. Let's also have it take um, multiple parameters rather than just one. Uh, we can get us uh, some practice for dealing with that using the tool. Um, and then we'll, we'll create a few other wrinkles along the way just to, just to see how things work here, right? Um, so I'll call this uh, uh, combine minus two, uh, and we'll see why in a second, right? So I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna kind of go through this the way I've been doing it in the past. I create a file called question. Uh, I can add this, this is fine. Okay, so, so here's what I have in mind. Um, uh, I'll say write a function combine that given two string string arguments returns the um, two combined together. Um, refers, uh, how will it say? It refers the first, the second appended to the first except you should move or omit the first two characters of each string, okay? And then I'll provide some examples, right? So, for example, uh, given Pi and, we'll say, given uh, Java and Kotlin, you would, would return um, va botlin 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 right uh, so I've, I've, I've added Kotlin to Java but I've removed the JA and the KO right and you could provide some other examples as well now um, in order to do this um, you know there, there's this question of what do I do if the strings aren't of length 2 and what we'll do is we'll just punt right we're going to say uh, you can assume that each string is of length f is of what at least two right this will simplify things okay so so let's write this method right the, the method uh, returns a string i didn't say that anywhere but that should be obvious because i'm doing string concatenation um, so i'm going to say a string combine and then i'll say string first first string second um, second and then I'm going to do return first dot substring uh, from two plus second dot substring. Um, and there's like a gazillion. This this question is is based off of a coding back question actually. There's like a gazillion of these string manipulation questions. You could spend like months just writing these. They're you know they're little permutations. The one in coding back is like you remove the first character rather than the first two characters, right? Uh, so huge innovation here, right? Okay, so there's our solution. Right? Now I've got to mark this with my correct annotation so that the test suite knows what to do with it. Uh, I'll call it combine minus two. Um, author is me. Um, and the version is uh, the first one in the month of June. Okay, good. And then I'm going to use this wrap annotation that we've discussed before uh, so that we strip off the class uh, the public class part of it and just have students write the, the string method. One of the things you notice is that when we do this, I typically don't include the, the modifiers, right? Things like public uh, for the string method, right? I also don't mark it as static. Um, and again, that's because those are keywords and ideas that students really don't get introduced to until we start talking about classes. So um, there's another way to do this, and actually maybe we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute, which is uh, you can provide starter code if you want to, um, but it's usually simpler just to omit them, right? Now you might, you know, there, there are some, um, anyway, I don't need to go into the details. This is basically tested as if it were a static method. The test tool will identify that even though this is an instance method, there's no private state inside the class. Um, and so it'll actually test it as if it's, an, as if it's a static method. And the details of that are not uh, things we need to concern ourselves with. Okay, great. Um, so I've got this set up. I'm gonna focus this uh, so that I can, um, so I can focus uh, the, my testing and I'm gonna hit test focus and let's run this and see what happens. Um, and we're gonna run into, oh, let's see here. That's interesting. Did I, I'll try this one more time. Uh, there's something 
Oh, I see what happened. Sorry. And, and this this is annoying, and I'm sorry. It can happen. This has to do with where the description gets put, right? You have to be careful. If you start writing the description uh, before you start the imports, for some reason, IntelliJ has this bad habit of... I think this will work now. Yeah. IntelliJ has this bad habit of putting the imports below your comment, which is not where you want them. The comment has to be directly above that correct annotation. I should probably improve that error message, though. Um, okay, so if we try to validate this, the first thing we're going to see happen is this error message about the fact that the solution threw an exception. Okay, so there's a, there's a feature to our tool where if you expect the solution, it's okay if the solution throws, right? Um, and if the solution throws, the submission is expected to throw. So this is an aspect of the behavior of submissions that we do test, right? And there's times when, for example, you, you will tell students put an assert in there and we want the assert to fire, right? Um, so it's not that it's a problem if the solution throws, but you need to mark it because sometimes it's a problem if the solution throws and you weren't expecting it to throw, right? So in this case, for example, we might not have realized that the solution was going to throw an exception, right? Um, and so you'll see here what happened is it threw a string index out of bounds exception. Um, and the reason for this is that we actually, um, so right now we haven't written any parameter generators, right? We haven't written our, our uh, fixed or our random parameter generator. And so what's happening is uh, despite the fact that we say um, you can assume that each string is, is of length at least two, we're actually not enforcing that right? There's nowhere that we're enforcing this, right? And so what's happening is the method is getting past a string of less than length two. And if I call first.substring, you know, uh, with uh, first.substring two uh, on something, um, sorry, if, if I call a, uh, if I call a method um, that, if I call substring, geez, spit it out, Jeff. If I call substring on a string that's less than length two, uh, substring two, it, it'll throw this exception, okay? Um, and so essentially, what I need to do here is I need to make sure that the inputs are always of length two. Um, there's a couple different ways to do this, okay? Let me show you a couple, right? Uh, we'll, we'll get to the right one, right? So there is this method called filter parameters. Um, and this is another method that you can annotate that will be used by the test suite by the testing tool, right? And the idea here is that this allows you to check the inputs and see if they're same, right? So we could say if first.length is less than two or second.length is less than two. Um, oh, and this is a, all right, so a method, not a property. There's a, there's a skip test exception that you can throw, right? Um, filter methods are, this has to be static too. Um, Filter methods are, actually, let me show you. Uh, the, the, the tool's pretty good about, about warning you if you don't, uh, if your methods don't match its expectations. So for example, if I try to write a filter parameters method, uh, oh, it looks like it's actually going to work. Uh, okay, yeah, no, it's not. It's gonna say filter parameters methods must be static. Okay, so it's reminding me that this method has to be static. Okay. Um, filter parameters methods are not uh, do not return a value. The idea is, again, they give you a chance to examine the inputs and see what you want to do, right? Okay, so now um, now we have another problem, right? And, and now this gets into some of the testing. This is actually one of the reasons why we don't want to use filter parameters here. Um, it, when you use any type of object as part of this testing tool, null will get tested, okay? Null is going to be tested. There are several different ways to turn that off. One way is to just take over the parameter generation process, which is what we're about to do. Um, that's the most common way to do it, is just to write your own fixed parameters list and to provide your own random parameters method, at which point you control exactly which parameters get per passed to the solution and submission methods. And so you can basically take over the whole process. Um, if uh, you don't do that, however, null is going to get tested. And in fact, null is going to get passed to filter parameters. Filter parameters is not expecting null, right? Um, and so what we could do is we could say, um, if first is equal to null or second is equal to null or, right? So now we're testing for null and this will work fine, 
right? What's going to happen now is that because my filter method is rejecting null and anything uh, with a length less than two, you'll see that this now actually will validate, right? So, so this is now considered correct uh, or a, a, a properly configured question according to our test suite, right? This is one way to do it, right? What happens now is that you're essentially using the random generation uh, capabilities of our tool, right? Our tool will normally include some strings that are short, but now you're rejecting them using filter parameters and you're also rejecting null, right? So, so this is a completely fine way to do it. Let's talk about a different way to do it, right? Um, but this is one option. And you might actually think it was a little bit cleaner. Um, I mentioned before, and I'm gonna have to clean up some imports here in a minute, but we'll just get to that in a sec, right? I mentioned before that um, if you provide a fixed parameters and a random fixed parameters list and a random parameters method, um, the random uh, capabilities of the tool don't get used, right? So let's look at how we can do that to work around this problem, right? So we can say fixed parameters. I also mentioned that when you give examples, it's actually really helpful to list them in the fixed parameters method. I also promised that we would talk about what to do if the if the method takes two arguments. Okay, so here's what that's just going to look like. Right? I'm going to say private static uh, final list of two. Okay, so this is a type that's provided by our tool, and this this is a uh, this is a type that takes a type parameter. So I have to tell it what the parameters are. So essentially, two string string means that these this will hold two parameters that can be passed to this method. So essentially it's going to allow us to give it a list of pairs that then will get passed into our method, right? Um, and we'll say fixed um, is equal to arrays.addList and then we start to uh, provide some examples. And I say new two and you know this is Java for you so I'm sorry about this. Uh, we can do Java Kotlin. Um, we can do um, you know CS125, CS124. We could provide some 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 other examples here as well, right? Um, now we have our fixed parameters, right? Now the fixed parameters that are used by the testing tool is where you will find null. So if you don't put null in here, null won't be tested, right? And that's actually kind of nice. So this is going to completely avoid. Uh, the problem uh, that we ran into a minute ago where we were testing null and uh, we weren't expecting null. However, if you run this, I still suspect, and I'm not always completely 100% about predicting what the tool will do, but I suspect this is still going to fail. Oh, it didn't fail, okay. So I guess it turns out that once we get to the random string portion, we never generate strings that are uh, less than length two. And that kind of makes sense to me because the tool uses a couple of short strings as part of its fixed parameters uh, stage. But once we get to random parameters, we're just using longer strings, right? Um, if you wanted to write your own random parameters method, maybe you want a little bit more control over the string length. Well, let me show you how to do that. Let me show you how you use, um, right? So this is private static two string string random strings. Again, I take as an argument uh, an instance of random. The library that you're using comes with a uh, some handy generators for various types of things. One of them is for strings, right? So I can do string first, uh, and I'll show you how to get access to this. So if I start typing generators, uh, you'll see questioner.lib. That's what I want to use. And then I want random alpha numeric string with length. I pass it random and I pass it the length that I want. And let's say random.nextInt. Um, let's pick something that's, uh, and we'll do something like this, right? And then I'm going to copy this to produce a second string. And now what I'll do is I'll return new to, I still have to link these together, first second. I'm sorry about some of the syntax clutter here. This is Java. What can you do? All right. So now you'll notice random.next it takes a bound, but it returns something between 0 and 31 inclusive. But because we're adding that 2, we know that our string will never be smaller than 2. Okay. So now let's try this again. I'm going to run test focused. I'm going to rerun the test suite for my combined method and uh, make sure that um, it's still validating properly, and it does, right? And again, we can go over here, open up the report, 
get a sense of you know what's actually happening here and, and what things are being tested and stuff like that. Um, and so you know you'll see that uh, you'll you'll see that this is working well. Okay, cool. So this is you know there were a couple of things that we highlighted in this example. One was how to write that filter parameters method, right? Which you can do. That's another way of providing input. So essentially, you think about these as complementary. If you want to tell um, the testing tool exactly what parameters to use. You use a fixed parameters list and a random parameters method. If you want to tell it what inputs not to use, you can use the filter parameters. Now, there's only one problem with filter parameters in that approach, which is that let's say that you know most of the inputs that are being being provided by the tool are not uh, sufficient. In that case, it's not going to work that well because you're going to be rejecting a lot of them. If you only need to reject a few use filter parameters. If you need to reject a lot, it's better to tell it which ones to use rather than to force it to keep guessing over and over again uh, fruitlessly, right? But those were two different ways to set up this question, um, but we've written another question together.